The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are in walking in purpose part whatever part we're on. We have so many lessons in this series so far and what we're going to be talking about today is something very powerful. We're going to be talking about respect of persons or God not being a respecter of persons. There's a there's a reference of this that we've talked about many many times in the book of Acts, and we're going to go through that context, but we're going to also read some of the other points because this is referenced in three other epistles where this phrase is mentioned over and over, where the understanding comes forth that if God will do it for me, God will do it for you. And we're going to be talking about throughout the day as we understand that God does not respect persons. So it's going to be a very fun lesson today. We're going to read through 1 Kings 17, and then we're going to jump right into the lesson. Just a couple quick announcements, though. If you are a part of our BSM Discipleship Curriculum, we have three classes left. So we have class tonight at 7 p.m., and then also our Divine Purpose class. There's three classes left. That's tomorrow night. And then our End Times Curriculum has entered into the last three weeks, which is all dealing with events. So the last three weeks of all these curriculums are very powerful and it's something that you're not going to want to miss out on. Also, we are coming up to quarter number three, the second half of the year. So be looking on the schedule, be looking at what class you want to take next. Make sure you buy your curriculums and you get enrolled because we'll be ready to go. And then just to go ahead and tell you what's coming tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have what's called Testimony Tuesday. Tomorrow I'm going to lay a foundation today on the fact that God does not respect persons. And then tomorrow, I wanna to share testimonies because there's something we talked about last week in the benefits of partnership that Paul used the church of Corinth to call the church at Philippi into partnership, which they entered in from the first day because of a testimony. And we're gonna talk about that tomorrow as we're gonna re go over it again tomorrow as we have Testimony Tuesday, where I'm going to show some test, I'm going to give some testimonies of God's faithfulness in my life, not just financially, but we're going to be talking about healings. We're going to talk about deliverance. We're going to talk about favor. We're just going to, I'm just going to give you testimonies tomorrow on what the Lord is doing in my life, what He will do in your life when you partner with the ministry, because God has no respect of persons. 
So let me pray and then we're going to jump right into the lesson. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, go with me to 1 Kings 17. We're going to talk about walking in purpose. We have to start in 1 Kings 17. And Elijah, the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, Behold, the widow woman was there gathering the sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sinneth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the curse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Now this is powerful and what we're going to be talking about this week and even at the end of this week going into the following week, we're going to be talking about a lot of specific truths dealing with this passage out of 1 Kings 17. We are going to do an overview. So we have testimonies coming up this week. We're going to do an overview of this passage. We're going to be talking about sowing for needs. I'm writing these down because the Spirit of God is just speaking to me as I'm reading through this passage. But if you remember when we went through provision and obedience, we had 70-something sermons where I went not just verse by verse through the passage, the first 10 verses, but we went word for word. We We would stop and we would look at a specific word and find all of the revelation that God would bring forth because of these passages. The understanding of Tishbite, the understanding of Zarephath, the understanding of Cherith, the understanding of the ravens, the understanding of bread and flesh. I mean... Each one of these have so much revelation. Kenneth Hagin used to say, I can't open the Bible without seeing Mark 11, 23. The same for my life. I can't open the Bible without seeing 1 Kings 17, 3, 4. The understanding of divine purpose and walking it out. Now, I want you to flip with me to Acts chapter 10. I was originally today going to go over I was actually going to take today and review the passage of 1 Kings 17. But as I was reading my Bible this morning and I was studying, the Lord brought something to me out of the book of Colossians. And when I was reading it in the book of Colossians, God took me to this passage in Acts chapter 10. And it's something that I know I've mentioned before. I know I've talked about many times before. It's one of these uh, kind of center point focuses in the Bible. If I had many... uh, taluses in my Bible, you know, the little strings that are in there. This would be a bookmark page in my Bible. I quote this verse on a variety of occasions for a lot of different reasons. But let me give the context of Acts 10.34 first, and then we're going to go into just overviewing some of the other places that we see this mentioned. Now, in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is at his house praying to God. He's a man who feared God but was not born again because he did not know about the man Christ Jesus. 
But as he sought the Lord, an angel of the Lord met him and told him to send for Peter who was at Joppa. Now at the same time that this was going on, Peter was in the middle of praying and fasting. He hadn't eaten yet. He's praying and fasting on the rooftop. And being on the rooftop praying and fasting, Peter entered into a trance and seized the sheet of the unclean animals three times. When that vision is over, uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit speaks to Peter and said, There are men downstairs that are looking for you. Go with them. And then Peter takes the journey with them and goes all the way back to Cornelius' house. When he gets to Cornelius' house, he says, What do you want from me? Cornelius said, I was praying. God told me to send for you, and you had the answer. And now, Acts 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I believe with all of my heart, this is one of the greatest declarations in the entire Bible. There are many amazing verses in the Bible, but if there is one central focus that as a Gentile believer applies to you more than anything, it's this one. Because the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, salvation, was given to Jews first. It was Jews that got born again first, filled with the Holy Ghost first. As a Gentile believer, you are grafted into the vine of Israel. So we are grafted into their covenant promise that was through the father Abraham. Now, you might say, well, why is that important? Because when Peter preaches this sermon in the rest of Acts 10, this is the very first time in the Bible that Gentile believers hear the gospel, or Gentiles hear the gospel and become believers. It's the first sermon preached outside of the Jews. And it was not preached by Paul. For more often than not, there's a passage later on in the book of Acts where Peter goes to the Jews and Paul goes to the Gentiles. And when we overview the Bible, a lot of times people see Paul as the one of the Gentiles and Peter is the one of the Jews, you know, different ministries. Now that does come forth later, but I always tell people, if you want to know why Peter knew that what Paul was doing was right, blessed him, gave him the right hand of fellowship and sent him on, it's because before Paul did it, he did it. Peter was the first person to preach a sermon to the Gentiles. And the reason why this is so important to your life is because this is where Gentiles first receive the promises and receive salvation. Now, the reason why we're talking about this today leading into what we're going to call Testimony Tuesday tomorrow is the fact that whatever God does in my life, God will do in yours. That's the truth that Peter is declaring. The salvation that was given forth to the, the Jews, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power of God given unto the Jews, is available to the Gentiles. It's available to all them that shall believe. That if you will put your hope in the Lord Jesus, make Him Lord, surrender, repent, turn back to Him, receive salvation, you can receive salvation. Anybody can. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, anybody can. It's not just delegated to the Jews. It's the first time it was ever declared in the Bible that of a truth I perceive, God is no respecter of persons. Now, the reason why this passage is also very important is that we're going to look at three other places in just a second where these verses are mentioned again. But before we do that, I just want to take a second and say something. When it says respecter of persons, if you look this up in the Greek, this word is just one word. Respecter of persons is one word in the Greek. It's a phrase. And that phrase is only used one time. The, right here in Acts 10.34, it's the only time in the entire Bible it's ever used. Now, this word is based off of two separate words put together. The first one being to look, actually seeing it. The other one is the face, meaning that you're perceiving the way somebody looks and that's how you're responding to them based on their, their persons. And when we say persons, what we're referring to is skin color, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, male, female. We're talking about physical characteristics of your physical body and the fact that God does not show respect unto you based on your persons. Meaning that when God looks from heaven, he doesn't evaluate the body itself. He evaluates the spirit that's on the inside of you. 
Jesus is a righteous judge. He does not judge according to the outward, but according to the inward parts. It's what's on the inside of you. Is what God values and evaluates you based on. It's based on the inside, not the outward appearance. Now, there's something very interesting about this word also. Because if you were to study this word, this word is really only used one other place in ancient text. If you look at Constantinople, which I'm not going to go into his history, nor am I qualified enough to talk about his history. I could study it and bring it to you, but not exactly relevant either. But if you remember in your history books, Constantinople was, um, you know, big in the, in, the, in the movement of the church. His archbishop, which I'm not even going to start to try to pronounce his name. I tried three or four times before. We're just going to call him the archbishop. <laughs> But the archbishop is the only other person in recorded history text that I've seen so far. I might be wrong. I might be used somewhere else. But from what I've found is the only other person to use this word where it talks about respecter of persons. And the reason why that understanding is so important is when he wrote about respecter of persons, he was using it in the context of coming against the abuse of power in the church. Now, you might say, well, why does that matter? Let me explain this. The only other person to use this historically was a person that came against abuse of authority. Now, where does abuse of authority come from? Well, the one specific example I want to talk about today, because we could talk about abuse of authority inside the church in a variety of different ways. But this is what I want to talk to you about today. It's an overstep and it is an abuse of the authority God put in my life for me to say that God will do it for me, but God will not do it for you unless you come through me. That's an abuse of authority because it's taking a position of authority when declaring the word of God and then misrepresenting God in the process, making you subject to me, making it where you are dependent on me. If you know anything about Blank Slate Ministries, this is something we come very heavily against. Is I don't believe that you need me. I believe you need God. As the Apostle Paul said, I've not attained. I say the same thing. I'm not there yet. I make mistakes. I fail in a variety of different ways. God loves me and I'm thankful that there's forgiveness. Just as there's forgiveness for you, there's forgiveness for me. Just, for, just like there's grace for you, there's grace for me. I'm just like Paul, I hadn't attained yet, but I might be farther down the trail. I might have studied a little bit more. I might have been born again longer. I might have had some testimonies because I've done been walking this thing out. So I might be a little farther, but I'm not there yet. So as your pastor, as your teacher, as your leader over this flock, my goal is to bring you with me as we all go after God. But in doing that, there is an abuse that some people take in which they say, you need me to receive. And one thing I always want to make sure you understand is you need to get to a point where you don't need me because biblically you don't need a pastor to receive from God. You can receive directly from God. And if you come under blank slate ministries long enough, one of the things you're going to realize is my goal my ministry is to equip you to walk out your divine purpose. And in walking out your divine purpose, though we might be the authority in your life, we might be the leader over you, but at the end of the day, I want to grow you up to walk in all that God has for you by you understanding that what God does for me, he'll do for you. I think that's just an amazing historical context. That even in the early church, in like the two and three and four hundreds, there was an archbishop standing on the fact that we will come against the abuse of authority that says you can't receive unless it's through. Well, God's doing it for me, but he won't for you. No, if God will do it for me, he'll do it for you. And I want you to know that. I want to give you this teaching today so that as we go into Testimony Tuesday, what all I tell you about tomorrow... The financial provision, the favor, the blessing, the anointing, the power of God, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, everything God is doing in my life and through Blank Slate Ministries, He wants to do in your life. 
He doesn't want Cody Dyer to be the only one receiving. The reason why we've talked about partnership going into the third week on this, you know, why, why are we talking about partnership so much? Why are we talking about all the things that God is doing at this church? It's not because I'm looking for you to partner because we want more money from you. That's not the point of this. The point of teaching partnership is I want you to experience the benefits of the reception that happens in partnership. The reception is where you receive of this table. What God is doing in this house, I want to be happening in your life. The only way you receive it though is through partnership. That's why we talked about partnership benefits all last week. And this week, I'm talking about the fact that I want you to understand that if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. If you say, man, I, I want to start receiving supernatural sustainment. I want to start walking in my purpose. I want to start receiving fulfillment in life. I want these things. Well, guess what? God wants those for you also. And I want those for you. But you will never receive those unless you partner. But when you partner, you receive because God does not respect persons. I don't care if you're 1550, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, male, female. If you live in the United States, if you live in Africa, if you live in Asia, it doesn't matter. What God does for me, he will do for you. Let's just flip to these places real fast because we're running out of time. We're just going to go to each of them one by one. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. You can go and read all of these contextually if you want to. I'm not going to go through each one of these all the way through. I'm just going to give you the, the, the pulled out verses. If you want to know if what I'm telling you is true, you can go read all of these by yourself later. We just don't have time to do it today. Well, listen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. And ye masters... Do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also, which is in heaven, neither is the respect of persons with him. Now we got the Romans and we got Ephesians receiving the same exact truth. There's no respect of persons with God. And this, and this is talking about masters. You know, we're talking about slavery. You know, we're talking about servant. God said there's no respect. I, I have no respect to persons. Go with me to Colossians chapter 3. This is where I read it this morning. I was reading this morning and, and, and I read here in Colossians. And as soon as I read it in Colossians, I was like, we have to talk about this today. Colossians chapter 3 verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. So you might say, well, Cody, if there is no respect of persons, Peter declared it in Acts chapter 10. Paul declared it, Romans, Ephesians, and Colossians. Three other times it's declared by Paul. The Bible is very clear that out of mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. Well, this is four times. Four times in the Bible it's declared. One time outright in a sermon, three epistles. That God does not respect persons. That your physical attributes on the outside, where you're born, where you're from, what's going on in your life. Whether you grew up in the projects or you grew up in Beverly Hills, God does not respect the persons. Because it's not the persons that dictates whether the provision, whether the supernatural sustainment, the favor, all of the things I'm going to be testifying about tomorrow. The persons doesn't dictate whether this happens in your life. What does dictate whether these things manifest in your life is only one thing, and it's called obedience. If you read all through every one of these places in the epistles, exactly what Peter was teaching in Acts chapter 10. He wasn't teaching, you know, Jews are more superior, that's why God does it for us. He wasn't saying, oh, I'm a white man, that's why God does it for me, but he won't do it for my black sister. That's not what he's saying. And that's a very misrepresentation. And for a long time, the abuse in the church has been in this exact area. Because the church is saying, you need me to be able to receive because God will only do it for me. He won't do it for you. It's a very big abuse. 
And I, I, if I, if I knew how to pronounce his name, I'd say his name. But the Archbishop on, under Constantinople was one of the most amazing people because this is exactly what he came against. He stood on the line and said, "God does not respect the persons. It doesn't matter if you're the pastor, if you're the apostle, if you're a prophet, evangelist, teacher, if you're a lay person, if you're a deacon." If you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're a teacher, it doesn't matter what you are. God does not respect persons. What God does respect, the thing that dictates whether you see it happen in your life or not, is your heart position and a spirit of obedience to walk and do all that God has told you to do. God didn't respect Cornelius because he was some amazing person it said everybody in the household got saved there was servants in that house it wasn't because cornelius was something special that the spirit of god moved in their life and this that salvation came to the gentiles that's not why it happened what god did respect is the fact that cornelius sought after god seek and you shall find that man sought after god with everything he had and he found him if you will walk in a spirit of obedience and if you will go after God with everything you have, you will receive everything that God has promised you. And everything that God wants done in your life will come to pass. There is no respect of persons with God. We're out of time today. So, Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. I'll give you all the glory for everything you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Remember. Three weeks left in discipleship classes. You don't want to miss any week. Please make sure you're sharing it with all your friends because we're about to go into the second half of the year. We're about to get into all new curriculums. We got a bunch of new stuff coming out in the second half of the year. I've been working on a lot of new books, so we got a lot of stuff coming out. But church, I love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Have a great day. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow Oh, the troubles to come The lily's not thinking about the seasons The drought or the flood The tree that's planted by the water Isn't faced by the fire So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Take good care of me